everyone. I am Doel. I am a clinical embryologist and an IVF lab director at Indoor Infertility Clinic. Today, I am going to talk about fertility preservation. The first thought that comes to our mind when we hear the term fertility preservation is of egg freezing and of many celebrities who have frozen their eggs at an earlier age so that they can become mother at a later age. But this is not where it all started. Fertility preservation has been around for around 50 years. The main application of fertility preservation was for cancer patients. The idea was to preserve fertility of cancer patients before they underwent treatment like chemotherapy or radiotherapy because these therapies have devastating effect on fertility. This is the reason why it became important to devise ways of preserving fertility of cancer patients before they underwent chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So today through this video let us discuss fertility preservation for diseases that can have direct impact on a patient's fertility or the treatment of a disease that can directly impact someone's fertility. So what are the fertility preservation techniques available for cancer patients? Well, for male patients it is as simple as sperm freezing or semen cryopreservation. For female patient, it depends on whether the female is married or unmarried. For a married patient, it makes sense to preserve the embryos and for unmarried females, oocyte cryopreservation or egg freezing is one such fertility preservation technique. How is sperm freezing done? The procedure is very simple. The male patient is asked to provide a semen sample after ideally two to three days of abstinence. After the sample has been received, it is then mixed with cryoprotective agents. These are chemicals which uh, help in cryopreservation of the sperm at a very uh, sub-zero temperature. And then this sample is divided into multiple vials and these vials are then stored in liquid nitrogen which has a temperature of minus 196 degree uh, centigrade. So as long as these semen sample vials are stored at a temperature of minus 196 degree centigrade, they have a potential of maintaining their viability. How is oocyte freezing done or how is egg freezing done? Well, egg freezing in process is very similar to IVF, except that it does not involve the step of embryo transfer. So just like an IVF cycle, the patient undergoes stimulation of ovaries to produce multiple uh, follicles or oocytes. Uh, the patient has to take injectable drugs for stimulating the ovaries and undergo follicular monitoring using ultrasound on a regular basis. And once the follicles reach a particular size, then the patient has to take an injection for a trigger. It's called a trigger shot. For, and after this, uh, the patient will undergo a procedure called ovum pickup or oocyte harvesting, whatever you may call it. And uh, this procedure is done under general anesthesia or mild sedation. The procedure will last about only 10 to 15 minutes. And um, once this procedure is done, the patient is free to leave um, after two to three hours. And within the IVF lab, um, the oocytes which are being harvested from the follicular fluid of these follicles are then processed and uh, they are stored on multiple cryo devices and these devices are then dipped in liquid nitrogen and this is how the oocyte cryopreservation or egg freezing occurs. This entire process starting from stimulation to the oocyte freezing would last uh, between 12 to 14 days. So the question is, uh, how much time does this entire process of uh, fertility preservation take place? So like I explained, for a male patient, uh, semen cryopreservation, one go of semen cryopreservation um, after producing the sample, the patient may leave within 30 minutes. The procedure of actually the lab procedure will last maximum in, uh, 50 minutes to an hour. And uh, for a female patient, the entire procedure of ovarian stimulation to the oocyte harvesting to the oocyte cryopreservation will take between 12 to 14 days. So when should cancer patients undergo the procedure of fertility preservation? Very important to note that please remember that the process or procedure of fertility preservation should be done before you take the uh, chemotherapy or radiotherapy. But in case 
you have already started with your chemotherapy or radiotherapy or have taken one sitting, it might be a good idea to discuss this with the reproductive medicine specialist or an infertility or IVF specialist and find out your options. So how long are uh, these frozen samples or vials of sperm and uh, oocytes, how long are they stored for? How long can they be stored for? So according to the current ART law, um, you can freeze your sperm, egg or embryo for up to 10 years. Beyond 10 years, you would need to take permission from appropriate authorities. To really so what is the cost of sperm freezing? So when a patient comes for fertility preservation and um, he produces a sample, so depending on how many number of vials we can freeze, the cost of uh, sperm freezing would vary between 5k to 8k and uh, they will be frozen for up to two years. It is, you know, the protocol depends from clinic to clinic and some clinic will freeze it for two to five years and take the entire cryopreservation charges in one go. But clinics, some clinics will freeze it only for a year and expect you to renew it every year. The renewal charges typically range between probably three to five K for two vials of semen uh, or sperm. So what is the cost of oocyte freezing? So the cost of oocyte freezing um, typically for onco patient range between 65-70k to 1 lakh depending on from clinic to clinic and uh, these oocytes are frozen again for at least one or two years again this is a protocol which is dependent on the clinic and uh, renewals typically will cost you anywhere between um, you know 20,000 um, for a year or two years. One question which is very evident in the minds of patients who undergo fertility preservation is that how would we know if our sperms or eggs are frozen properly over the years or not? After taking the first step uh, towards fertility preservation, I think it is very obvious that patients uh, will feel worried about their gametes. It is a very natural process. So choose the IVF lab and the facility in which you do your fertility preservation wisely. There are many advanced IVF labs which monitor their cryo facilities with devices or apps that can help them to understand the general health of the cryo containers and the liquid nitrogen level. So once you decide to go ahead with fertility preservation, um, you should simply, you know, all you need to do is get in touch with them annually to understand the renewal date and the fee if applicable and leave the rest to them. So as a clinical embryologist, I am deeply passionate about fertility preservation. I have seen the huge impact fertility preservation has had on the lives of uh, especially cancer patients after they have won the battle against cancer. So at the end, I would just want to say that um, we only regret the chances that we do not take. So please choose for TD preservation if it is applicable for you and remember you need to take the step before you start your treatment for cancer. Thank you. So that is all for today. For any more questions on fertility preservation or if you want to know what is the right time for preserving your fertility, please get in touch with us at Enrolled Fertility Clinic. The numbers will be flashed on the screen. Thank you so much for your time.